Okay, so here we are in MakerBot uh, Desktop. So if you're using a FlashForge Creator Pro, um, you'll have your printer set to the um, replicated jewel. Um, these also, these other ones will work with other types of printers. Obviously, if you're using a, a replicator, then obviously use the replicator one that's specific to you. Uh, but some of these will actually work with other, I think the replicator mini might work with like an up mini. So there's a couple of different versions there you can use. Um, so the um, MakerBot desktop is a dual extruder 3D printer, um, and it actually has the same dimensions as this because it's based on um, the replicator. So that works well. Uh, so we're going to add in our model, uh, which is in here, and it was Chubbunny 3D print, and it brings it in and he's on his side. So we're gonna to wanna to correct that, obviously, um, by selecting him and then clicking the rotate button. And then uh, rotate, selecting the correct rotation and bringing him flat. And then um, we're gonna move him, uh, make sure he's on the platform, that's important. I'm going to chuck him in the center as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter where in the platform he is unless you're printing, you know, more than one thing. And um, you'll see I, on this model, I haven't gone through and smoothed out. I'm not going to actually print this one. I'm going to print one that I've prepared earlier, but I just wanted to take you through with the same model. Um, it is the same model. It's just one that I've actually um, smoothed out and touched up, but it's exactly the same otherwise to this. Um, so he's on there. Um, we're going to click dimensions now. And this is where you want to figure out um, how tall you want. So you'll see that the Z axis in uh, MakerBot Desktop was actually the X axis, which we set to 35 in ZBrush. Uh, so that's the height. Um, so 35 mil is going to be from the bottom of him to the top of his uh, little ears there. And that's fine. Um, to figure out how tall you want your model, in real life, it kind of helps to have like a ruler or something on hand so you can actually look at it and get an idea as what the, what's going to sort of feel like in your hand. Um, if it's your first time printing, make small prints. Um, even 35 mil uh, might be too big. You might want to go to even like 15 or 20. Just make lots of small ones because, um, oops, uh, because every printer is going to be different. Uh, the material you're using is going to be different. It's going to have different temperature settings to what I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm using, um, but just use it as a guide rather than as um, gospel. So uh, this guy is going to be 35 tall, and then I've just uniform scaling on, and that's just set the other dimensions there. Uh, I've already put them on the thing, so I'm going to take you through my settings really quick. So <clears throat> because this is a dual extruder, I've got two different um, things set up. I've got it set up so I can put ABS through either extruder and PLA through either extruder uh, and I've got some basic settings set up as well uh, and once again these settings are going to be different depending on what your material is and what your printer is. The ABS that I've got works well at 230 um, with the platform temperature at 105 I found is, the, uh, is pretty good. It stops it from sticking to the bed too much. Um, so that's all fine. Um, the next thing you want to look at is infill. Uh, this will depend, this will vary depending on your model. Basically, it gives you like a hexagonal sort of shape inside. I'll show you once I slice it what that means. Um, so you want to set this to 10% or higher just to give it some structural strength as it's printing. Um, extrusion speeds, I keep as default. I actually have never changed these because they've been fine on my prints so far. Uh, model properties, this is important. Layer height, so this is actually going to be the, how detailed, uh, this is going to affect how detailed your model appears. I, I found that 0.15 is a, is a good layer height to go with. Um, I had tried going at 0.1 and I think it was just ridiculously small really for what I'm doing. It doesn't need to be that, uh, the layer height doesn't need to be that um, small. It's not really improving the print quality to a point where anyone's going to be able to tell. Number of shells, it's going to create an inner shell of the model if you change it. I just keep it at one. That's fine for the size models that I'm doing. Um, fixed shell starting point. This is sort of uh, important. It's hard to describe, but basically this is puts a seam, a seam on your model. So uh, it's basically where each layer starts. So if you think about the, the printer going around in a circle, it's going to start at one point and go all the way around in a circle and end at one point. And it's going to do the same on uh, each layer of the model. So it's going to create a visible seam up the model um, by doing so. So keep this in mind. This will actually affect the orientation of your print 
um, if you don't want the seam to go through his eye there, for instance, I know that 215 degrees will put it roughly there. Um, so you might want to turn your model around or change um, the, uh, the starting point. Multi-material printing is if you are using um, a different, uh, like if you're using PLA as your support material, uh, set it to zero. If you're using the, the right extruder, set it to zero. And um, for ABS, like I've just got it set to zero. And so that means that the support material will be the same material as what comes out of the right hand side. So um, set it to one if you want it to be the material that's from the left hand side of the, uh, the left extruder, if you've got a different material um, or zero for the right. Um, and then you can apply that. Uh, raft, this is really useful to pay attention to. Um, getting basically what the, what what this is is the models being printed on a little raft on the bed um, so when you pull it off you don't actually accidentally damage the bottom of the print um, the most important thing to think about here is um, the raft to model spacing I've got it set to 0 0.6 you can probably set it to 0.5 or even slightly lower I think I normally have it set to 0.5 when I'm doing PLA yeah um, this just helps you pull the raft off if you've got a little bit more space there. So around 0.5 mils is probably fine. Um, and these are the pattern of, I just quickly look at this, I'm not going to run through this, it's quite boring. Um, but these are the settings I've got for my base layers, and then the interface layers, and then the surface layers. So um, yeah, just pause the video, write that down if you want to copy me exactly. Like I said, not gospel, so these may not work exactly for you. Supports and bridging. Um, I have got, normally I have support turned on. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why it's off. Um, I want, I put breakaway support on. It just makes the support strips that print out, uh, easier to take off. Um, so, uh, that's useful. I don't know why I had support off. I must've been printing a part or something. Um, and then I keep all of the support, um, what you would call it, the support settings their default something you might want to adjust at um at one point at some point is the support layer height i've got it set to point two um because i don't want to waste print on it basically just um it prints a lot quicker if you got it that set set that way um if you set it to be the same height as your layer it might stop the um hot end dragging across it um, as it's moving from one side of, um, of the print to another so i'm actually going to do that now because i've noticed that in the past that it can be annoying um, it doesn't damage the print, but it can sort of be annoying when it's um, when it's sort of printing the infill and the support. Um, right extruder, so this is uh, ABS. I've got the setting for the, the right extruder and this one for the left. Um, so this is the only one I'm using. Filament diameter is the diameter of the filament that you're using. If you've got a digital, digital caliper, you will want to measure it um, coming, in out of the, uh, coming out of the box. Um, it will have measurement on the box and standard is uh, 1.75 for most people. So um, check that it's accurate. It might vary um, as you get through the, the spool, but um, mine's actually been really, really good um, the entire time I've used it. It's been spot on. So um, hooray for the stuff that gets sent with um, with the Flash Forge. Good, good stuff. Um, and then all these settings I've set to the, the same. And I'll quickly take you through PLA as well. Um, there are some slight differences. The extruded temperature is a bit lower. Um, I've got the extruded temperature set to 200 degrees instead of 230. Um, platform temperature is set to 45 degrees instead of 105. These are the settings that worked for me very well uh, for the material I've got. It will, once again, vary depending on, um, depending on uh, what your material is and what your printer is. Um, and I've got the filament diameter and all that set the same. Uh, the raft is set the same. Um, model properties is the same, still 1.15. Uh, uh, infill, I've got to set to 15%. I think I was playing with something, but 10 or 20 or 15 is fine. Extrusion speeds, I've got set to the default. That is pretty much that. So um, let's slice this bad boy up. Um, just so you know, if you haven't done this before, slicing means just slicing it up into individual layers um, the whole way up, and you'll see what I mean once I press this and do it. Uh, actually, press with this, you want to press the preview button. Okay, so the slicing has completed, um, and you'll get some estimates of how much material you're going to use and how much uh, time it's going to take to print. Um, 
you'll probably want to um, add on another 10 or so minutes to that on average um, is what I've discovered um, it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit hopeful I think with its print times um, but just middle mouse um, scrolling in you can see uh, the print and all its layers and also the materials uh, sorry the support materials for it uh, so you can see there there's some supports that have been put into the mouth um, and there's a, a really little one behind that one ear but not the other which is weird because it's a symmetrical print but whatever um, and then pretty much everywhere else it's it's unsupported which is good and um, the less support the better it's easier to clean up that way this slider here if you drag it down I'll just take you through each layer of the print so you can see the infill um, is what I was talking about before that's hexagonal infill um, it's a good idea just to slide this down really quick before you print just to check there's nothing funky going on, on the inside and as you can see the inside spheres that I talked about in ZBrush aren't there you're just seeing that external shell which is good um, so yeah that looks pretty good to print and um, yeah and also the raft of what I talked about there um, at the earlier on it's just that part there so it's going to print that and then a raft and then all that stuff on top and it's going to be hopefully easy to get off the bed and then easy for the model to pull away from the raft so um, after you're if you're happy with that you want to click export and then export it to uh, wherever you want it um, and just click save and then once this is exported you want to insert the uh, SD card uh, into your computer's SD card reader, I hope you've got one um, handy. Uh, otherwise, I think you can pr plug them in via USB. I'm not 100% certain, I've never actually done it. It's much easier to do it uh, just with the SD card, I find, because it's literally sitting one foot to my left to unplug and then plug it into the thing that's just on my right. So um, you'll want to copy that across onto your SD card and then plug that into your printer. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the actual print.